Namaste. I'm with Dr. Rajiv Kumar and we are now going to talk about the future mm. uh, vision. So a lot has been achieved in the last few years. What would be your vision for the next say five years? Well, I, I can't put it better than the, than the Prime Minister who said that in the next five years a new India should be born. Okay. You know, and, and he sort of said that a new India which is free from, which has uh, uh, six freedoms. Uh, the freedom from poverty, freedom from squalor, freedom from, freedom from casteism, freedom from communalism, freedom from terrorism uh, and, and freedom from environmental degradation. Now, so that's the one sort of, if you like, uh, you know, sort of, a, uh, you know, very pithily put things that we got. And to substantiate that further, what we need is, for example, five years, a huge focus on agricultural modernization. Hmm. If we so far have uh, focused on agriculture output, but not on farmers' income, and therefore you've had the scene of you know rising food grain and other output, but some also quite often you know continued farmers' distress you know over the last so many decades, etc. So what we need to do is to modernize our agriculture uh, and, for, and and get into agro processing. Hmm. Only six or seven percent of our food is agri you know, agricultural output is now processed. You know, I mean, countries like America, you know, process 70 percent. So there's a huge potential there. So agro-processing, uh, then you've got, uh, you know, uh, reducing uh, costs in agriculture so that you don't continue to overuse chemical fertilizers and chemical pesticides, etc. Improve the quality of land, uh, connect uh, farmers with global markets, with proper infrastructure, you know, air-conditioned, you know, chains where they, whereby, you know, wastage can be you know, minimize now we at the moment they estimate that we you know, waste about 20-25% of our agricultural output. This, in, this goes for dairy and for horticulture and for marine, all of that. I think so that's one big... That's focus. huge. That's because huge. Because it affects a large number of people. 600 million people, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, and we need to do that because, you know, the farmers deserve as good a life as anybody else. Sure. And, and therefore we need to, and one of the programs that is happening is called the Ujjwala scheme, for example, where all the rural households are being given, you know, these connections for, you know, the, the cooking gas. And, and, and uh, something like 54 million households have already been given that in the last four and a half years. And also the electricity has now reached every village uh, in, the, in, in, in the country. The most inaccessible one in Arunachal also has been. So, you know, so that change will make sure that we don't have this dualism between rural and urban India. Mm. This whole notion of Dehat and Dehati right, right, has right. to just get out of our right. system. You know, so that's the one big change. The second, of course, as I mentioned, is the health. Mm. Because India uh, has so far not spent enough on public health. And that's been a very big cause of, uh, of continued poverty because every medical emergency means a trauma and then a slip is back into poverty, you know, and we, uh, our Indians spend uh, close to 70% or 70, or is it more, 70% uh, out of pocket expenses on health care, uh, and which is why the launch of the uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, Jan Arogi Yojana, which will cover 500 million people. So we want to make sure that our, that, uh, that our secondary and tertiary health is covered and people can be taken care of without going through you know, massive uh, problem. Plus, connect it with uh, preventive health, primary health, and programs like uh, you know programs like Swachh Bharat, you know the public right. hygiene system. Right. So all of that. That's a big one. And and the other big uh, thing going forward is to uh, win this fight against malnutrition. Mm. And because that's uh, human capital is our main resource. Right. Human capital is the comparative advantage that we have. So we can't have a situation where you have 38% of our children undernourished and about a third of them wasted mm. and 50% of our women and, you know, with anemia. So that's the other big one that we want to achieve. So that's the next five years and, and I wish we will, and I hope we will achieve that. And, and, and the last one let me mention here is lots of, you know, is, is, is education, especially yeah. the quality of education. And women. And women, the quality of education and there and, you know, and, and in there the participation of women and women's participation in 
participation in female labor force, you know, which has been declining quite uh, steeply in our country, uh, which we have to reverse. Uh, again, the next five years the program has begun is the interlinkage of our rivers. To yes. be able to control our floods you know, better and to be able to you know, do our water programming and physical infrastructure. Mm. You know, we need to bring, get, modernize the railways. We need to uh, ramp up our energy uh, distribution. We need so, to this requires a lot of capital, of course. Yeah, this requires a trillion dollars in physical infrastructure investment in the next uh, 10 years. A trillion dollars. So, that's also the investment opportunity. But, you know, what the biggest thing in the next five years will be that we would have made the shift from talking about eliminating poverty to achieving prosperity. So you and feel that will be done? That will be done. And there will be, I think, poverty will not remain an industry any longer. You know, and including for, housing? Including housing. The Pradhan Mantri uh, Avas Yojana for rural and urban. Uh, incredible numbers. You, you would have seen. We will yes. be putting up 10 million units by the end of next year in the rural sector. And we are putting up about uh, about uh, uh, 2 million in the urban centers and, and this will be ramped up further. You know, so uh, housing will be, uh, and, and all of these things are actually on the ground, mm. not just being talked about. And we are monitoring them in Niti Aayog, as I said. The, pr the, the Prime Minister monitors them on a monthly basis under his program called Pragati. You know, so, you know, so ha housing, uh, roads, uh, waterways, which we want to do, are, we are going to start 100 new airports in the next five years so that our regional connectivity is achieved. Already our civil aviation is growing at about 20 percent per annum for the last five years. So it's years. a very broad development program on all fronts reaching every segment of society. That's very remarkable. Is there a disruptive counterforce of concern where you have people that may be separatists, that may be uh, you know foreign nexuses operating here, uh, people who are not part, who don't want to see themselves as part of the positive narrative of India. Do you feel that these kind of forces can be controlled or are they getting out of hand? Oh, they are certainly not. They are getting marginalized. They are getting marginalized. They are getting marginalized very rapidly so. And also they are, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them now recognize the futility of these, you know, of these attempts and efforts. Because, you know, India is like almost like an oil tanker in sale now. You know, so those little snippets from small boats and the so greater on. the success the more likely these people will jump and say okay i'll Absolutely. join i'll join the bandwagon the, the single important silver bullet if you like thing is to get that development going and to make it into a mass movement the rest i think will be just yeah. complete because then they won't be able to recruit young people Absolutely. young people would rather get Absolutely. into this. Absolutely. Then the young people are already the kind of uh, success that we are achieving in Chhattisgarh you know, which was the hotbed of Naxal district sector is, is quite incredible. Again because the chief minister there is totally focused on development, on driving the highways into the you know, sort of areas which are inaccessible so far, getting the people, you know, the, the education and the health and the energy, the electricity that they need. And some of our aspirational districts in, in, the, in that state are achieving an amazing success. So now, development we've talked about as an, as an external development, but there's also an inner development. Yeah. Inner development, the HRD worries about mind, mental level, but there's even deeper a spiritual development because there is an in, inner infrastructure, a, a, a population consisting of individuals who are better in their inner being, better in control, uh, in, whether it's through meditation, yoga, whatever the spiritual practice may be, uh, they are going to be more creative, they are going to be more healthy, uh, they are going to be more compliant with each other, uh, support each other. So, uh, how about development of that kind uh, also? What is being done, you feel, uh, in that regard? Not enough as yet. And uh, I wish we would be able to uh, do that. And I wish, therefore, that also we can, and I know that that's one of your passions, uh, we can first take the first step of towards creating a system of integrative medicine, yes. which integrates uh, modern medicine with our traditional medicines and, and practices, which as we know, that as you said, that the inner health is more important sometimes because that influences and controls and affects our physical and outer health. And if we can achieve 
uh, better health at the subtle level, then you'd achieve the others, uh, you know, of course, um, uh, going forward. But as I said, uh, uh, there is now uh, sufficient uh, conversation around this. Ever since the Prime Minister made yoga an international, you know, uh, brand, and he got the International Yoga Day yes. and so on. So all of that is now far more accepted in our uh, modern Indian society than it has been before. Yes. I mean, so so my I grew up, uh, you know, uh, under the challenge of uh, having to hide any yes, yes. any Me spiritual too. practice you had yeah, to do. Yeah. It was not you know it was not uh, worth talking about etc. All that is changing. That's a colonial hangover. The colonial hangover. The only the, the, the danger of that is I think we need to point out is that. We need to uh, we need to make sure that it is not taken over by, if you like, uh, you know, jingoism, jingoism and revivalism and yes. you know and that sort because that then takes you into a realm where, where nothing is achieved. Yes. So we need to have that balance. And it should be science based also be because science. these are these are part of science, and 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 the new scientific paradigms all over the world are appreciating the importance of spirituality. Yeah. So the spiritual infrastructure. Is a is a very important future idea. We can continue our conversation someday on that. That's the thought, which we must discuss at some length. Yes. As to how that is a integral and a, a unsubstitutable part. Yes. Of uh, achieving what is called you know welfare. Yes. And, and and good living. Yes. As we go forward. So I know Rajiv, you have a very exciting and eclectic background personally from one extreme to the other and you are an amazing person who's brought all this together and your spiritual journey is also a very important one uh, at some point i definitely want to come and talk about that sure